Welcome back everybody for another episode of Movie Social. We're your hosts, Ricky and Stefan. Today's episode we're going to talk about The Five Bloods. Yes, we did do a review on The Five Bloods. You can uh, check it out in the uh, right hand corner up there. But yes, that was just a regular spoiler free review. This one is going to be a spoiler review. So if you have not watched the movie yet, Pause this and go watch it right now on Netflix and then come back and watch us. So, guys, if you like us, please don't forget to subscribe and then also hit that like button below. And don't forget to let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And without further ado, this is the Five Bloods spoiler review. Alright, so it's another Spike Lee joint. This time it's set post Vietnam and during the Vietnam War which I kind of liked because it gave two different dynamics even though Spike I don't know what was up with the characters looking exactly the same before the during the war and after the war I'm like yes I'm pretty sure that was something that they could have did about the that. hell could we get some aging technology to uh, reverse their age Definitely like they've could. done in Disney movies and things like that like some like uh, what prosthetics maybe go? anything some makeup because uh, Paul still looking the same but a uh, nice catch with the uh, temptations as everybody's name for those that didn't catch on to that Paul David Otis Eddie Melvin so the premise of the show of that movie was these Five, uh, four war, war well, I'm sorry, not war, war, but Vietnam War vets go back to Vietnam to recover their fallen fifth member's body that was uh, buried. They thought they would never be able to retrieve it because they couldn't find a location. But due to the mudslides and different change in geographical uh, events, has discovered that they've now been able to pinpoint the location again. So they want to go back and retrieve his body. But that's not the only thing they want to go back and retrieve. They also wanted to go back to retrieve the gold that they all buried. And of course, D. Roy, oh, I'm sorry, Delaroy's uh, son, aka Paul's son, David, pops up on them while they're there. So he's saying, oh, y'all not leaving me out. I'm coming too. I want a piece of the action. So, turns out to be five of them going back into the jungle to basically retrieve the gold and retrieve the body of their former leader, who's played by Chadwick Boseman, who they go flash back and forth between the times for. So, a uh, few of the characters in there are dealing with some issues from the past. The character Otis is dealing with uh, the fact that he slept with one of the people while over there during the war, comes back now. He still loves her, still hangs out with her, but it turns out they actually had a child together that he did not know about. Mm -hmm. Never knew until he came back to get the gold. Wants her to help him get the gold, to sell the gold and help them get it out of the country with that money. So they set up a meeting with this French guy who to me looked shady from the very beginning. I do not trust him. Plenty of red flags went off in my head the moment I seen him on there pop up. I don't like the guy, not at all. Out of set pass, we'll find it ourselves, we'll sell it ourselves, everything. So they all agree, okay, we got a set price. Let's go out there and get this gold, Let's get a guy to be their guide, but not to follow them with them in the jungle, but give them the maps and all that. So they go out there and all. Before they set foot into the jungle, they stay the night over in this little village, or whatever, where uh, the son, Paul's son David meets these uh, D bombers or bombers, or whatever you want to call them. I bomber rescue, bomber rescues, or they. they yeah, I forget their organization name, but they go out to find uh, landmines and bombs. Like something like, along the lines about landmines, whatever, yeah. where they detonate them safely, so that way people aren't dying or getting limbs blown off walking in the jungles or 
in places where there were previous wars at, mm -hmm. which makes sense because technically that should be on the military's responsibility because we still have those to this day uh, around the world that they should be responsible for removing safely. Agreed. So, fast forward to the next day, they set out to the jungle to go find this golden uh, Chadwick's body. They had some issues because our Paul, David, and Otis, and uh, I'm sorry, Paul, Otis, Eddie, and Melvin are old now. Quite old. Even though they look the same as they did back then on this, on this war. They are all old. I uh, believe Otis has a hip issue. Paul has a, mint, a serious PTSD issue that we're divulging later on in the show. Eddie has a hey. toe. Yeah, but Eddie has something else that they discovered down the line, but other than that, Eddie's fine. Melvin, Mr. He played by Isaac uh, Whitlock, has no major issues other than uh, maybe a little overweight, which I'm still kind of figuring out why didn't y'all have him being skinnier during the Vietnam War? Because he kind of looked like he would not have passed the fitness requirements for the war to begin with. <laughs> I know we were short-handed, for a war that we shouldn't have been in begin with, but that's neither here nor there. But come on, y'all couldn't have him a little slimmer. It would look better for the presentation, but okay. So, um, like I said, walking, and I think it gets to the point where, like, they start having uh, turmoil within the group. Yeah, um, first night there. First night, they finally finding like uh, that um, that Otis had a gun, and they was like thinking like, oh. The, uh, the girl gave him the gun to kill his friends, but he wasn't he it wasn't like that. It was just for safety to be careful, mm -hmm. um, and like they that there was a lot of turmoil within the group. Yeah, cause so really set up Paul's uh, PTSD like crazy. Yeah, so as they continue to the next day, you know, in the jungle, uh, David has to use the bathroom, whatever the case may be. But as he is going down, you know, the hill to use the bathroom, he stumbles across a gold bar, so he calls. Daddy, 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 I think I found it, whatever. Yo, he was extra loud. One, I'm like, first of all, if you don't <laughs> shut up before, because right before that, they just they show people with guns okay, spying yeah. on them. So I'm like, yo, if you don't shut up before somebody hear you, yeah. but lo and behold, so there was nobody there that time. They, um, who had the, oh, Melvin had the um, metal detector. Metal detector. Or, so they, they, they find him, they, they find him, like, they find it, you know, they, well, after they found the gold bar, they're looking for the, uh, uh chest that the, they, yeah, the, contain, the, the container, essentially, that they had put the gold bars in. Lo and behold, the bottom rusted out, and they're like, yo, we came this far for nothing. You know, I was pissed myself when I <laughs> but said, I'm like, really? As they are walking, he's, uh, Melvin starts to get more hits on his metal detector, and they're finding each gold that they actually, like, even though it rusted out, the it, gold bars slid down the mountain yeah, because of the mudslides yeah. and the rain and everything. So, so they, it's been sporadic in that area. Yeah, in that area. So they're, they, they're looking for it. They're looking for it. They wow. found all the gold. So they're now they're doing their other mission, which is to find... Their cover-up mission in a way, too. Yeah, to find his body. And lo and behold, they do indeed find his body. I believe his name is Norman, correct? Um, um, Chadwick Boseman character, I believe his name was Norman? Starman Norman. 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 Yeah. So, they do indeed find his body, or whatever the case may be, and they're like, okay, we came here, we did what we came to do, uh, we found the gold, we found um, Starman Norman's body, let's go to the attraction point, meet up with the guy, so we can get the hell up out of here. Mm -hmm. In the process of them going on, they, more, more team turmoil, started arguing about stuff, about what they're gonna do with uh, the money, not the money. Not the just that, the gold, they they wanna split it, what? Yeah, what parts. Of, so Paul, of course, wants his son to get his, his fair share. Which I agree, he should but have. But mind you, Paul and his son don't get along. Paul has never been there for his son, David, at all. That's which true. we'll get into in a little bit. But, yeah, they want to split the gold. He wants everybody to get a fair share. 
the other Eddie wants to give the money to charity and charity. everything, mm -hmm. saying that that's what Starman Norman would have wanted. That's what he said that we should do with the money, give it back to our people, give it back to the cause. And that's when you find out about um, about well, Otis agrees, and mm -hmm. then at that same time is when you find out about Eddie's. Um, Broke, basically. That he's he, broke. He, he did bad business and all that because Paul's like, Well, you're rich, you don't need it. Yeah, Russ, Russ need it. We need money. And of course, then that talk goes and Yeah, I'm broke. I maxed out my cars for everything here. I don't have any money, none of this, none of that. These dealerships ain't giving me no money. This ain't giving me that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. sucks. So then they continue to walk. Like you said, they have another argument. And Eddie is walking away. What's the Borkin is saying? Go Borkin is saying. Arguing with them. Yeah. And boom. He steps on the landmine. And his... Uh, he only that was a graphical scene. That's yeah. That's the only thing that was left was his torso. Cause torso and head. That was all. His legs and arms were blown off. Which I'm kind of questioning. I'm, I'm not an expert in all this. It's going to lose all your legs and arms and that's it. Everything else is staying intact. I can understand your legs because you landed on the bottom. Or I can understand leg and arm and all that. Or heart part of your torso gone. But just to have your arms and legs completely gone and just your head and torso there intact together. I'm like... Not sure. Eh. I'm not going to sit down loud of you. I have no idea. I was like, um, I thought they could have made a little bit more but effort on that. But in the that was process, David... Stands on a land, sits, uh, it's on a land of mine, but his is different. Well, no, his, his, it's the same thing, but see, Eddie stepped on it and backed up at the same time. He he took his, yeah, foot, he, shifted, uh, he, he shifted his weight, his weight off the pressure plate because these are pressurized land mines. So the moment he shifted his weight, the, it triggered and went off. Eddie, uh, well, David still has his foot on because yeah, he heard, he heard the click or say, he heard yeah. something, he, he heard it click down. Which one, why are you walking around? They just had one blow up. Why are y'all moving, period? You don't move until you know it's safe to move forward. Mm -hmm. So they come up with this idea of how to get well, David. Hold on, hold on, you, you forget. That explosion made a lot of noise. Oh yeah. So that, it yeah. brought the people that they ran into in the village the day before. The girl that David was trying to talk to, uh, Hattie, and then her team, uh, Simon and Seppo. Se Seppo, whatever his name is, the French group of them that's trying to do the uh, decommissioning of these uh, landmines. Mm -hmm. So they met up with him and they said that they, they think they can help. Mm -hmm. And they go over there, they look at, they assess the situation and they look and they're like, okay, I don't, it's either, it's either active or which they, they don't know how to help. So then Paul remembers the time that they helped somebody get off of one and what they did. So they tied a rope around David's waist. Mm -hmm. and high up, around, high his up around his waist. Everyone grabbed a part of the rope and they all pulled as hard as possible, uh, as hard as possible. And I think he told him to run or something. Or like, what did they tell him to do? Oh, they told him to haul. Yeah, they told him to run. Like, as soon as they, like, start to pull it, as soon as he feel his weight being, like, pulled, to start running. So, it worked. Now, does that work? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's just for the, for the movie or if that's actually something that works. But, it was successful. He was alive. Um, and they continued out on the road. Now, what Paul does is saying, okay, I appreciate that y'all helped save my son. But y'all sure know, y'all know we got this gold, and uh, no, y'all know why we out here now. So we gonna um, hey, hold y'all hostage. Yeah, he told his son, "You want a fair share? You tie them up." Yep. And Which is kind of crazy. A father telling his son to tie these people up. They're going to now be hostages because of this situation. Yep. Here. So on uh, the time up, they hold them hostage. And like I said, they, they, they're still having back and forth within the group because they don't think the way Paul is handling the situation is, 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 is correct. And while, um, and then you had the scene at night where Heidi acts or Heidi, I forget how I pronounce it's, her name. It's Heidi. Heidi, she actually used the bathroom. She's having a conversation with David. And then David. Or Heidi, um, Heidi I'm sorry, Heidi. Yeah, so they, they have a conversation and then Paul comes up like, let's tie her up back up. Like, mm -hmm. 
Now, day breaks. Oh, no, 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 no. Still at night. Hold on. You, you missing a key moment. Well, go ahead. So at night, they, as they tie Hetty back up, of course, Paul gets into oh, yeah. it with the group again. Now, while Hetty's being tied back up, Zeppo gets loose and takes off. Yeah, and he runs off. Runs off into the night. They can't get to him. They, they were about they, to shoot him, but they, they were just they, they, let him I go. I don't know what happened. They just let it go. He just ran off. So, they fast forward to the day. They get to the meeting point where they're supposed to meet their guy. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Back to that way they can get back to where they need to go so they can get this gold. So, but as they're getting ready to get probably get into the vehicle, who shows up? But the local Vietnam citizens who are furious. But we'll, we'll figure out more about them down the line. But yeah, they're furious. They want their fair shit. They are now told about the gold. They actually have Zeppo as a hostage. The man in that they give them the gold or they're going to kill him. Of course, Paul's like, kill him. We don't know. We don't care. Everybody else is like, no, we can't do that. They... And then kept trying to say, we don't have gold. But one of the villagers says, yeah, y'all do. Cuts the back, one of the bags open, the gold spills out. Then here we go with Otis. We can share. We can all split yeah. it. And then everything just breaks loose. Yeah, all hell breaks loose. Zeppo jump, goes running off, gets himself blown up by <laughs> him, <laughs> which is so ironic at, at this point. The reason and, why that was ironic to me is because, okay, you are part of an organization looking for landmines to defuse them. You know this area is a hotbed for landmines. And you go twice, not once, but twice, you go running off in a different or opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And this time you get blown a bit. Why? Instead of just running and ducking for cover doing all this. Mind you, because there's a lot of bullets flying at this point. Knives just ripping in through the people's chests and all. It, it became a bloodbath. But one of the one or two of the villagers does escape in the vehicle. They get off, mind you. The vehicle that uh, the group Paul and all of them were supposed to use to get away was shot. The gas tank. And the so gas the tank. gas tank is leaking gas and fuel at this moment. But again, they're arguing still because Paul wants to do it his way. He says, "Let's go off into the jungle." But the guy saying. There's a uh, temple here at such and such a place, not too far from where we can make it still in the vehicle. And the rest of the team was like, yeah, let's go there because yeah, we can, we can hunker in and make a stance because you know they're going to come back with more people. Paul's like, no, let's go in this jungle in this woods. We can get his way this way because he doesn't trust nobody. Not at all. Not mm -hmm. a single person. But in the midst of all of this that has happened, the chaos, Paul's son David has shot, gotten shot. What does Paul say? You're not my son anymore. Mm -hmm. All because Paul wanted to give the rest of the group a fair shake and wanted to say it wasn't right the way that they were treating Hetty and uh, Simon and Zeppo. So Simon and Hetty say we want part. We want a piece of the gold because they're going to now give the guy a piece of the gold because the guy says he can help them get the gold out of the country. Mm -hmm. So. They all agree, okay, yeah, we'll split it all together. Of course, Paul says, no. Y'all can do what y'all want with y'all, sure. I'm going to do what I want with mine. He goes off into the jungle, and they start heading towards the temple to make their stands. Now, so I can do this part. <laughs> this is about to get funny. So, I'm going to just do the Paul when he was by himself part. Um, he's in the jungle, and, you know, he, his PTSD is just, like, going off. And he... I think something happens where he falls. Well, before he falls, he gets bitten by, by a snake. snake. Yeah, and he he he, he suck. Yo, he's a savage, bro. Well, he tries to suck the, the uh, no. He sucks out. some of it up. He sucks some, but not enough. Yeah. So he starts to suck the venom out, spit it out, and the guys are on him, like they hear him or whatever. Because he because he top, shoots it. They split into two different teams. Yeah. Now the uh, uh, the locals have split into two teams yes. to hunt them, hunt these groups down. And like I said, they hear him because he shoots the snake. Like, I think he sh shoots the snake. As it's escaping. The snake is running away at this point, And he <laughs> shoots the snake still. Like, he, mind you, he has a machete in his hand as well. So, he said he falls and the gold bag. Well, he starts to fall and stumble because he, 
at this point, the venom has got taken a part of into yeah. his bloodstream. He's hallucinating even more so than he was before. Stumbles, trips, rolls, falls. The bag gets caught up on a branch. And he's down in the ditch. Yeah, now. he's down in the ditch. He's like, well, listen. Not, I'm not going to say ditch, not but ditch, the riverbed. Like, yeah. The riverbed. And he's like, Storm and Norman, I guess you won't, you don't want me to take it. You can, you can keep it, whatever. So, as this is going, he end up he does end up getting caught. But in the process, like, they go back and show, like, like how he feels bad and how he feels the way he feels. And part of the because, main is why he has this PTSD. Because while they were... Um, in the plane that fell after they found the gold, they shot, you know, they, they killed the this people. back on the war. Like, exactly, back on the war. Someone was sneaking up on them. And he, the way he shot is he swung his gun around while shooting. So it's like, not like he swung it around and then shot. He swung it, like, while he was holding the trigger. It kills the guy, but it also kills Storm and Norman, which is played by, obviously, Chadwick Boseman. Which, and I'm still questioning him. Who in their right mind in the military is just going to spray their gun around knowing you have your ally, including not only just an ally, but your commander right behind you shooting on that side? Who does that? So he felt bad. Like, that tore him up. Like, I think that was the main source of his PTSD. Yeah, that was the breaking the tip and of the PTSD. So, so, they, so they, the, the, the guys find him or whatever the case may be. And they tell him to dig a hole. He's singing a song while he's digging a hole. And they just light him up. Overkill, obviously. Yeah, they, they, they really were vengeful at this point. Yeah. On him. And, uh... But nobody... They, they still don't know what that gold is at that he had. It's sitting up in the street. Yeah, and they, they asked him where it was. It. They asked him where it was. He said Storm and Norman got it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, they, they asked him. And then they rendezvous um, at the temple. temple. Now, take it away from here. We flash to the temple. Guess who comes up with the group of all his, uh, locals? Lo and behold, our French guy, the uh, broker that they were making a deal with to sell the gold. Remember what he had on when he got out of the car. Oh yeah, well I'm not going. I'm, I'm not going to forget that part because that's a that's a crucial moment. Comes up with Paul's. Let's make America great again. Hat. Yes. Paul's Let's Make America Great Again hat. His little Trump supporter hat. Since he did say he voted for Trump. Which, yeah, uh, Spike. I understand your reasoning, but... Fuck Trump. Always fuck Trump. But, yeah, back to the story. So, yeah. Comes out of there. Everybody's a little shocked. I'm not shocked because we're... Listen, he was a slimy, greasy little French guy. That's nothing against French people, but, yeah, he was a slimy, greasy guy. Says, yeah, we just want the gold. We'll, we'll let you guys live, but I want, want the gold. They're all like, mm, okay, here, you can have it. We just want to live. We want our lives. Just let us live, and you can have the gold. He's like, all right. So they hand him the bag, one of the bags that they were carrying. They all, at this time, start walking back in towards the temple while he tells one of the vo locals to check the bag. <laughs> Lo and behold, that bag has nothing but a bunch of rocks. Nothing but rocks in it. So, of course, you know, that's not going to sit well with anybody. They bullets just start flying. A lot of the locals that were there start getting picked off quickly. He just says, oh, God, everybody's getting picked off. Let's go get back to the vehicle. He tries to back up and escape. Mm -hmm. But his vehicle hits the tree because who shoots him? Melvin shoots the driver and the vehicle tips over. Somehow he gets out the vehicle though with a grenade and the gun, his little piece shooter pistol. So, doing all this commotion, their guy uh, gets shot. But uh, he, Otis gets shot, right? On, yeah. Well, Otis gets shot as well, but the the, the guy gets shot in the arm. Oh, Otis uh, is like I. No, 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 the guy, oh, the, the guide. The guide. The guide. The, the local guide. guy gets shot in the arm while the shoulder. Otis is like, okay, yeah, that's you'll be fine. That's just through and through. You're good. Mm -hmm. But at that same time, Otis gets shot. And then Otis gets shot again. Otis is really hurting now here. But Melvin comes to the rescue, shoots the guy, shoots Otis, and kills him. But then we got, uh, 
sticky situation here now. We still have the French guy there hiding in the corner. I don't condo I don't agree with this. Melvin shoots at the corner instead of letting the French guy come out in the open first. He shoots at the corner alerting him that he's there. French guy throws the grenade. What does Melvin do? He does what he said he would never do. He jumps onto the grenade. Sacrifices himself to make sure it doesn't kill anybody else. And then French guy comes out about to kill Otis, but then David shoots him with some support from Hetty to hold him up. Shoots and kills the French guy. And then they all find those four make it back out. Well, I'm going to say actually five because uh, Simon was still there. Mm -hmm. Little coward. Hiding away from most of the time. He had a gun, but he was hiding away from me for most of the time. He was, he was missing in action for most of the time. They all make it out with the gold. Otis goes back to actually officially meet his daughter as being, saying, I'm your father and all mm -hmm. that. They go back to America, give some money to uh, Melvin's family, Eddie's family. Paul originally had given a letter to Otis that nobody knew about to give to David in the event that something did happen to him. Mm -hmm. He reads it where Paul basically admits that, yeah, when your mother died while giving birth to you, that kind of put me out of the right frame of mind to love you and really be a father for you. He explained all his reasons mm -hmm. why he wasn't there to support him and told him that he loved him, which was a touching moment. But it doesn't exclude him from being a Trump supporter, so fuck that part. But then they give money to various organizations. Hetty's organization says they're going to start helping and also block great manufacturing prosthetics and all that to help those that are bomb victims be able to still live better lives and yeah. also more funding to help remove bombs. They, they like also give money to like the uh, they they did something for Seppo essentially like like yeah. a, um, a tribute a tribute to him within the organization. Yeah, they gave it to Black Lives Matter. Yes, that was a nice moment right there. They gave it to somebody else, I believe, as well. They gave it to a couple organizations, yeah. quite a few organizations. They gave it to each member's family, even the ones that died. They honored Starman Norman, and then of course we flash forward to different moments of it, Black Lives issues. But then it goes off into the credits. So, I mean, it was a long, very long video, movie. But it really was very good and entertaining, touching. I liked being, the fact that they went back and forth in time. Just don't like uh, the age-wise. Yeah, Keeping that, that age, them looking the same. That definitely did throw me like off. That. I, I I wholly I hardly they had they should have did something about that, um, about making them look. Cause I mean, if I'm not mistaken, the Vietnam War happened in what seventies maybe, sixties seventies. It not was sure. the six fifties and sixties I believe. Cause this was still all around the same time of Dr. King's assassination. Yeah, so it was it was like the, it was the sixties and all that. Yeah, so it was the sixties. No, nobody that was in the 60s looked like, I'm pretty sure that somebody in the 60s that looked like they was 50 then, <laughs> now in 2020, all look completely, they're not going to be able to do nothing. Ain't no mm. climbing up no hill, nothing. Mm. So they, they definitely could have done it to where they had like some type of prosthetics to where they looked younger or some CGI. I mean, they probably didn't have money for CGI. It's like he got enough money. They, they could have did something. They could have did something to where their younger counterparts in those flashbacks. Or even cast somebody to play the younger roles of them. That too. For a brief moment. That something, too. Anything would have been fine. Hell, I would have even accepted the son playing the dad as a younger role. <laughs> no, then that would have been. I mean, it would have been confusing, but that would have still been better <laughs> than what they did for that part. But other than that, it was a great movie. Again, I do like the uh, fact that they had them playing the names of the characters being the temptations mm -hmm. and did you know in the credits they also had a uh gave credit to that uh people that uh is credit in there for two people as being that consultants to help mm -hmm. them with the handshake the that handshakes and all I'm like really 
Interesting. That's a new take. Never seen That's that awesome. before. But that was nice. Nice little call out. Yeah, it was a really good movie. Um, like I said, definitely give it a watch. It can be found on Netflix. Um, what do you rate it? Oh, I gave my rating in, in, in the other one. I know what I want to say. I'm going to get one more time. I believe I gave it a 7 out of 10, I believe. Okay, I was giving it about a 7.5, 8. I mean, because it was great cinematography, great, uh, uh, I don't want to say music, but a score. And great a storytelling. Well, a score for, for the sound. Yeah, but it was definitely great storytelling. It just, yeah. it just took a little while to develop. Yeah, but, of course, he didn't like that part. But, yeah, uh, my only gripes were Trump part, because fuck Trump, Trump shouldn't even be mentioned in this movie. Let's fuck him. And <laughs> also, of course, the age issue. But, guys, thank you guys for watching this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you guys thought. See you guys.